Hi class, in this recording we are going to be focusing on the female sexual response. There are many similarities between the female sexual response and the male sexual response. So just like the male sexual response can be broken up into four phases, we could do the same with the female sexual response. We have our excitement, our plateau, orgasm, and resolution. As we look at the female sexual response, um, this sexual intercourse, um, when we think of this, we're thinking of penile penetration of the vagina, can be known as coitus, coitin, or copulation. Um, so there's multiple technical terms all referring to this sexual act. So let's think excitement and plateau. During the excitement and plateau phase, we find that the labia minora can become congested with blood, and oftentimes the labia minora often protrude beyond the labia majora. So here's the view of the labia minora uncongested with blood. I'm going to skip ahead a slide here. Um, as the labia minora become congested, they swell and become much more visible. So I'm going to go back a slide here now. The labia majora are also going to become reddened and enlarged. Um, and that's particularly because of the uh, vestibular bulb, which is located near the labia majora, becoming engorged with blood. And as the labia majora become reddened and engorged with blood, they tend to flatten and spread laterally away from the vaginal orifice, making it easier for the penis to penetrate the vaginal orifice. And we also have an increase in vaginal transducate. This is going to be a serous fluid. It's not sweat. Instead, it's going to be extracellular fluid that is going to ooze through the non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium that lines the vaginal canal. And because it's a non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, we find that it's not very waterproof, and it allows for the liquid that extracellular fluid to ooze outward to lubricate the vagina. As we look at the greater vestibular gland and to a smaller degree the lesser vestibular gland, pun intended, they are also going to secrete some mucus-like secretions that are going to aid with lubricating the labia minora and the vestibule for the penis to penetrate the vaginal canal. Oops, too far there. There we go. So during the plateau phase, we find that the lower one-third of the vagina constricts. And as we look at the vagina, um, here is our vagina right here. And this is during the plateau phase. Let's back up a slide and compare vaginal anatomy during the initial excitement phase. So during that initial excitement phase, the vagina is not going to have as much blood flowing through it. And then during the plateau phase, it's going to have the rugae within the vagina or the vaginal ridges are going to become engorged with blood. And that's going to enhance stimulation for both the male and female and induce orgasm in both partners. So that lower third of the vaginal canal, or the, you could think of it as the distal third, is going to become what is referred to as the orgasmic platform. And then the upper end of the vaginal canal is going to dilate. And as that dilates, it opens up and it actually has a little bit of empty space, a small lumen forms. It becomes cavernous. And we find that the uterus is also going to move. So as the female becomes more excited, the smooth muscle of the uterus begins to constrict and causes the uterus to change orientation. So it is nearly vertical. And in terms of other female responses, we find that the breasts swell with blood and the nipples become erect and that aids with stimulation and overall stimulation for the female anatomy so the female is more likely to induce orgasm. Let's focus on the clitoris. The clitoris itself is going to have blood become engorged in it. As we look at the erect clitoris, it is visible right there. Let me clear the screen and go back a slide for us. So the clitoris 
here at the excitement phase is just becoming engorged with blood. And then during the plateau phase, the clitoris um, is going to be slightly more exposed as the pupus is retracted, causing the clitoris to become a primary source of stimulation for sexual pleasure. Let's move on to our next slide. During this process of having a penis penetrate the vaginal canal, we find that the thrusting is going to cause physical stimulation of the clitoris and also cause the pupus to move back and forth over the clitoris. Oftentimes, it's physical moving of the pupus or prepus that causes stimulation of the clitoris of the female anatomy. And during this late plateau phase, many times women will experience involuntary pelvic thrusts, and these involuntary pelvic thrusts are going to be upward motions that will cause the penis to be penetrating deeper into the vaginal canal. And a lot of times there'll be a suspension or stillness. So there'll be a thrust in the hold that's involuntary, and that'll be immediately before female orgasm. And then during that female orgasm, we find that there is a very intense sensation that spreads through the female's pelvic region from the clitoris through the pelvic cavity. Sometimes this also will correspond with a sense of warmth. And within the pelvic platform, so that lower third of the vaginal canal, there's going to be some very strong contractions about one second apart. And then the cervix itself, the open or the neck of the uterus will plunge into the vagina and the, let me clear the screen here, that external oz of the cervix opens up, dilates slightly so that more sperm can gain access into the female reproductive tract. So let's back up a slide here. As we look at the, ex the cervical canal, the cervical canal pre-orgasm is going to be relatively tight. And then during orgasm, the cervical canal dilates slightly to aid in more semen and sperm getting into the female's reproductive tract. As this orgasm is occurring, that uterus itself is going to have rhythmic contractions. And these rhythmic peristaltic contractions help to pull semen into the female reproductive tract. We also find that the anal sphincter constricts. Let me move my control panel there. So we have constriction of the anal sphincter, and we also have constriction of the urethral orifice. The paraurethral glands, sometimes referred to as Skeen's glands, so let me clear the screen. These yellow glands here and here are homologous to the male's prostate gland and will oftentimes expel a lot of fluid. This fluid is referred to as the female ejaculatory or ejaculate, and it's analogous to the prostatic fluid that comes from the male prostate gland. Many women will sometimes experience a flush or a, um, a rush of blood to the superficial capillaries of their skin around their abdomen, chest, head, and oftentimes will start to sweat. Um, it's worth noting that orgasm is not needed for conception within the female physiology, but if the female does orgasm, it increases the probability of conception by increasing the amount of sperm that enters into the uterus. Other side effects of orgasm include elevated heart rate, tachycardia, and elevated respiratory rhythm or hyperventilation. After orgasm, the female will enter the resolution phase. And during this resolution phase, the uterus is going to drop forward back to its resting position. The orgasmic platform will quickly relax so that the rugae of the vagina are will become smaller and the vagina will slowly return to its normal dimensions. That flush um, or dilation of superficial capillaries disappears very quickly. The areola and nipples are going to um, return to baseline. And this term of returning to baseline is referred to as 
detum essence. Um, and that's as we have the smooth muscle relax and have blood flow return back to baseline. The breast as a whole, though, take about five to 10 minutes to return back to the pre excitatory size. There's also a lot of post orgasmic perspiration. Um, and it's often um, noted that women don't have a refractory period. Males typically need to wait a minimum of 10 minutes or as long as several hours in between orgasmic events. Females can have multiple orgasmic events back to back during the same act of sex. So if the male is capable of uh, uh, maintaining erection and providing additional stimulation to the female anatomy or using something else to provide other than the penis to provide additional stimulation to the female anatomy, oftentimes that female will experience rapid orgasms in succession. That's all we have for this discussion of the female sexual response. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them in the class discussion board or shoot me an email. And as always, class, happy studies.